Welcome to Real Estate Unlocked, the ultimate podcast for aspiring realtors, fresh faces in the business, and seasoned professionals alike. Your dynamic duo are ready to guide you through the exciting world of real estate. Please welcome your host, Erica Kozlarich Bird, and her co host, Tammy Barnes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Real Estate Unlocked. We're so happy you are joining us today. And again, I have my co-host, Tammy Barnes, and Mama Diane. Hello. Everyone has been loving Mama Diane being on the podcast. It's been fun having the three of us do this. It was was fun to see all the comments. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're such an inspiration to so many. So thank you. That's uh, very nice you to know, say. Everyone calls you Mama Real Estate. Everyone <laughs> comes to you for advice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we love having you on. So you know, I mean, let's get right into it because we have a lot of great stuff we want to cover today. And um, you know, I kind of feel like all of them are good, but I'm I'm excited about what we want to cover today. So you want to lead us off? Yeah, so um, what I, you know, listening back on our podcast, and, and we have to admit that we're a little vulnerable with what we're doing. We, we um, Erica had the idea, and I think it was for agent development. So we like to address that and say that that is why we wanted to start the podcast, and we hope we've accomplished that in the first two. Um, so tell us about that. Tell us about being vulnerable, doing this. What, how do you feel after our first two? Yeah, you know what? Now I'm excited and it just fuels me more because uh, like we had said in the first podcast where I thought I always wanted to get into coaching, but when I really looked back at it, all the different roles I played. So I owned a brokerage. I owned a transaction coordinating company. I was a manager of a brokerage and I also was in agent development. And I loved agent development because... There are different ways of getting business and you have all of the coaches out there and they have their own way of teaching how to get the business. Um, It sometimes all comes down to the same thing. What I love about agent development is that there's almost like a therapy side to it and it's just exposing the truth of everything and pointing out, you know, um, when, when agents are down or, they don't really know what direction to go or they're trying to still stay relevant in the business. That's what fuels my fire more than anything is keeping people motivated and letting everyone know like, Hey, it's okay. And sometimes I have to do it for myself. So you and I had talked, here's a prime example that there's a realtor that he wrote a book. He's like number two in the nation. He's, you know, the new, hoorah that everyone is like going nuts over. And I thought, well, I'm not buying the book until I know more about you. And I always go into a deep dive of people and who they are and where they came from and how they became successful in business. Well, you know, when I really dove into it prior to becoming a realtor and getting into real estate, he was a sports agent. Well, of course you could make millions of dollars in real estate because you have this huge fear of influence, that's not attainable to people. And I'm not interested in reading that kind of a book. And I feel like we're always comparing ourselves. So it's not even just in real estate, right? We're always comparing ourselves to others that we see on social media and people that paint a picture on social media. Realtors do the same thing. And you can find often that you are watching and you're looking at people And you're comparing yourself to them and you really don't need to. That's the beauty of our business. Only compare yourself to yourself. If you have a goal of 200,000 a year and you make that goal, then be happy. Don't be looking at what anyone else is doing because that might not be attainable to you. It might not be what you need. It may be a grind that you don't want, that your family doesn't want, that your husband doesn't want. So that's what I love about the, the, agent development aspect of it is that there's a lot of truths we're going to kind of unfold here. It's going to be very transparent. 
And today we're going to definitely go over the business plan, kind of what you just hit on. We're going to go over some marketing ideas, but we also want to kind of make this fun. I think that as a family, um, most of the comments were, you know, having fun, <laughs> loving it and so forth. And, and we have done that. Um, Mama Di has taught us that, that, you know, when you go to work, you, you have to make it fun. It has to be more than a paycheck. She always said that, always have other goals. So we're going to go over that in, in our business planning and so forth. But we also, I, I feel like we want to also cover, we have said it over and over, that it can be a lonely business. Like you just said, you sit at home, you're preparing yourself, you're trying to figure out some good marketing strategies and what is everyone else going through. And so we kind of want to add to the podcast, I think, as we go forward, it's just some fun things that we see, kind of discuss, how do people feel. And I know the, the first thing that uh, besides the mar- business plan and marketing, we are going to get to all of that. But you know what I noticed that will kind of lead into everything? On social media, there's this post explaining all the different things that a realtor does and how they earn their commission. And when I saw that, and it's been on, uh, is it on your feed? Because it's all over Mike. It's all over Mike. And and I'm I'm shocked at how many people like know a realtor and they're reposting it and so forth. It made me go, hmm. (laughs) And that's going to be a segment that I think we're going to cover going forward, things that we see and just kind of discussing it and getting out there and for everyone to leave their comments on how they feel about that so we can address certain things as we go forward in, in our podcast. So how did you two feel about it? I felt like, why do we have to, a doctor doesn't put on social media what they do when you come into their office. An attorney doesn't, an accountant doesn't. It's just, that's what you expect. So how do you feel? I, You know, I read it and was like, oh, moving on. It was not something that I felt compelled to copy and paste like what people are doing. That's because when clients hire us, they already know us, like us, and trust us. Or we've been referred by someone else and they've gotten the accolades, right? So when you're, or at least when I'm searching for a doctor, I'm reading reviews. I'm reading Google reviews. And I'm reading the reviews on them and what people are saying and what people are saying about their bedside manner. So you're right. You don't have doctors that are doing that. And if a brain surgeon had to post that, I would be like, (laughs) do I, you have to prove yourself. So, uh, you know, that's just, that's just how I feel about it. And I think that perception is so much. And so you have to step back and think, how is the consumer going to perceive this because when you break down the commissions and the hourly it's going to be very different for many people it depends on the client um it depends on a lot of different factors so i think that you need to prove yourself to your clients but you do that when you're sitting at the table going this is why you should hire me even with buyers, I sit down with buyers. I have a whole buyer presentation I put together and I give it to them and they get it on our first meeting. And it's a nicely bound book with the properties we're going to go see and a way for them to make notes. So that's my presentation of this is the, the service that you're getting working with me. That's your resume that you basically hand them and say that this, because right. they don't get to interview, you know, clients. I mean, obviously sellers do, but On the resale side, the buyers don't really, they see a property, they call, and they don't know what they're getting into. So that's a great idea for going forward of, yeah, because they can call many agents, right, when they see properties. But when when they're tied into you like that, that almost makes them feel guilty. (laughs) Yeah, you know, only once, and I'll never forget, and she is, she's so, so sweet, but she had a bad experience with an agent. And she said, I'm going to interview you. I'm not going out until we sit down. Okay. Great idea. So we sat down and she literally had, and she writes it in the review. Like she, she wrote a review (laughs) and the review really says she walked in my office, sat down, had a two page dissertation (laughs) of like what her expectations were, just all of these different things. And I was number one, I was able to educate her. I was able to take some of the pieces and go, okay, this isn't attainable. Here's why. Okay, this is what your needs are. This is how I'm going to fulfill them. 
And she was like, okay, I'm done. When can we go out and, and see property? So, you know, I mean, I think buyers should do that. I think that they should sit down. I think you should have a list of what your expectations are and sit down with different agents and interview different agents. Don't just go call someone because, oh, they've listed the house and we want to go see it. You have every right. I think as a buyer to do the same, it's an interview process. Right. Don't wait until, you know, right. you're in the car and in the house. How so. do you feel mom and die? Well, <laughs> I feel like you absolutely should be sitting down with that buyer before you ever go out in the car, before you ever even really pull all the properties because they call on a house usually, um, or maybe they call because they saw an ad or something, but, you have to question them. What are they looking for? What do they really have to spend? Have they talked to a lender? There's so much to go over at the table. One of the things I think, and I'd like to speak about it regarding this, one of the things I think is the biggest jeopardy to agents right now is that all of the younger people have learned how to do everything via the phone, via the click, 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 and you're done. And they get so used to that, they're not used to taking time. And you have to take time. Then that list that everybody read that was on the internet, which is fine, that was spelling out, we all do do all those things in order to complete a transaction. But you don't want to point that out. You want to show them you take the time to get started. You get the time, take the time to go out. Now, I'm not against if, if you had a listing and someone called me and said, I'd like to see your house today. Absolutely. And you go meet them. You don't try to pull them in the office and do all that because it's your listing. You want to go show it and you want to get it all taken care of. Then you say to them, I'd like to go back to the office if you've got time or let's set an appointment so we can sit down and go over everything. So that they know you're not trying to sell them just the house you had listed. You have to be working. This is a service industry. Um, that was why 34 years ago I made my slogan devoted to service because it's pure service. Then your paycheck will follow that and so will all the other clients. So it's taking some time to be able to do all those things. Like Erica said, that lady was pleased because she felt like someone listened to her. She, someone heard what she needed. Someone heard what she wanted. And that's just a very important thing. And then you can brag about being number one. You can brag about your new. You can brag about whatever you want to. They frankly don't care as long as you do what they're asking you. They want to be able to go. They don't want to be turned over to someone else. Those kind of things. So I kind of service. feel like Give good with service. everything that's in the media about the commissions and so forth, we've, we've said it over and over that it doesn't become uh, an issue unless there's an issue. And the issue usually is that the agent didn't do their job. And that's when it becomes the same as you would go to any professional and say, wait a minute, I expected this, that, and the other, whatever it is, wherever, you know, whatever the professional's role is. And so I honestly feel like all of this started, and yet that's what we're saying with agent development. Don't get yourself to that position. Make sure you are becoming the professional every step you take, that you are being a professional and that you look at it that way and that you now are in business. When you become a realtor, not just about the brokerage you're with, it is about you owning your business. And you have to realize as well, you are advocating as a buyer's agent, you're an advocate for your buyer. That's why you have, and that's why it's best to have a listing agent and a buyer's agent, right? right. So we talk about the fact that like, Dual agency is illegal in Colorado. <laughs> and the number one thing of lawsuits. I mean, that is the number one when you all the stuff we've been studying to get our Colorado licenses. It's yeah. amazing that that is. Yeah, because it, it truly honestly is. How can you be fair to each side when you're representing on both sides? So you have to realize you're an advocate for your buyer. So even with that particular client, you can't be intimidated by lenders either when you're new in the business. Because with that particular client, she was retiring. And she said to me, I'm going to be on a fixed income 
in four years, I have to know that I can afford the payment. I have to know that everything's going to be okay and that I'm not going to be overstretching anything. And boy, before I took her in a house, if you don't think I wasn't calling the lender going, I need you to break down this payment. And if you get a lender that won't do that for you, then you need to go back to the buyer and say, they won't cooperate with me. So do you want to have them break down the payments or do we move on to someone else? And I've had that happen before as well, because there are people that they are going to need their payment at a certain price. And that's where honing in on your skills and working with the lender and communicating with the lender saying, listen, I care about what my clients wants and needs are. Cause guess what? Once again, when they're writing that mortgage check, they are, they're going to be thinking of you as they're writing it. They're not going to be thinking of the lender because he didn't, you know, break down the payments for you or they messed up. They're going to be thinking of the realtor because you're the advocate for your client and you have to be that way. That is a very good. Mama Di, do you want to add to that? Well, I, I disagree just a little bit about the dual agency because I feel like you can do a dual agency. If you go into your profession as a professional, then you're going to be able to handle a dual agency because you let your sellers know that you have to represent what the buyer's needs are also. And they go through an inspection. When you read that inspection report, if there's items on there and you're going to list them out, then the seller has the right to say yes or no or what they want to do or not do. But you still have to let both sides know you're there to handle the transaction. You want happy people when you're done. And if you stay working the file, not just passing things along, you know, sign this, sign that, and not talk about anything. So I think you can do dual agency as long as you walk into this representing the home to both people as it stands. You haven't done anything to the house, whatever they find, maybe the sellers didn't even know. You talk it out to each side of what's practical, what's not practical, and that kind of thing. You've done your job. If you take on a dual agency and your whole end of conversation is waiting for your paycheck because now it's more, it doesn't matter. You could have taken that buyer to a different house, another house. So he's still your buyer. So I don't see a reason why we have to step away from that. Um, I do know that there's been a lot of things that make it be where some people are not capable of that because they've got a different agenda. I don't have an agenda, so when I go to take somebody out, I feel like I can handle that on a professional level. And yeah, so you basically far, so good. sort of just become the messenger of paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> so paperwork. Right. you know, I mean, you're you're yeah. you're basically right. you know you're basically going to a seller, going, "This is what the buyer wants," and you know, you you take a little bit more of a neutral position. But my point was correct. Just, you know, my totally point neutral. was just when you're right. I know which yeah when right. you're representing a buyer. You're an advocate for them. When you represent a seller, you're an advocate for them. Either way, you're an advocate for whoever it is you're representing. Throughout the transaction, all the way through, you're looking out for both sides. So going along with our theme of our business plan and marketing, because we're at that time of the year for both, uh, I want to also do some a couple good feel good things that's happened. So Mama dies in California and we're in Colorado for our listeners. And it is amazing how real estate is still a topic. So Mama Di, we'll let you start with this last week, the client that you got for us. Now, mind you, in California, but he plans to move here. But I love this. Well, I didn't love the story, but it kind of goes with what you're saying. Of what did that realtor do for him when he came here to start looking around? The story is. It goes along with what well, the we've story. Been the story about. begins with needing our trees trimmed, and right now that's a very expensive thing. And this crew came, and it was a huge crew. So I stepped outside to see if they had any questions other than what the gentleman had written down on the trees, etc. And the one gentleman walked up, and as he walked up to me, I said, "Hello, I'm Diane. Are you the boss man?" And he goes, "Yes, I'm the boss man." Then he laughed and said. I better not say that too loud because the people that are going to be working on the trees do not consider me the boss man. So I'm not the boss man. And um, so it started out, we had some laughter going and he said, um, forget what he asked me. 
And I said, oh, yeah, I said, I have a grand. Oh, I think he was mentioning his granddaughter. And I said, I have a granddaughter, but I said, she's grown now. And she took off for college in Colorado. And so the parents are over there now, too. And he goes, oh, we're in Colorado. And that's what began the story about that. And he said, um, Colorado Springs, his son lives. And he said, I was going to move there. But he goes, I had such a bad experience with the real estate agent. He said, to make the long story short, she showed him three houses. And by the time they got to the third house, he didn't care for what she showed him because he said she never listened. He said, she's showing me things. I'm getting ready to retire. And this has all kinds of acreage all over the place and a small house. He goes, I just want a house. I don't want acreage to take care of anymore. That's what I want to get away from. And he goes, she didn't listen. So when they got to the third house, he said, this is the same thing. He said, this isn't what I really wanted to see. She looked at him and said, quote from him, um, you don't want to buy a house and you're taking up my time. Do you realize this is my time that you're taking up? And he goes, oh, well, I'm really sorry. I thought that's what you did for a living was show the house. Is that the time I'm taking up? And she goes, let's just go. I have a fourth house. So he said, when they got to the fourth house, she said, now I know you're going to like this one because this is a beauty. So just to be mean, he said, because he knew he would never buy anything with her. He walked in and he goes, it was a nicer place. But he said, I wasn't real thrilled, but he goes, it was nicer. But I wouldn't give her the benefit of the words to say, yes, this is a, a beautiful house. He said, instead, I went, oh, this is more yucky than the other ones. I think I'll be going now. And it's really nice to have met you. So I started laughing and I said, well, I said, I have great news. If you decide to go to Colorado again and look at houses, my daughter and other daughter are there now. And both of them are getting into the real estate in Colorado. And they've been realtors for years and years, et cetera, and gave the whole buildup of you guys. And he said, oh, my God. He goes, let me have a card. So I got a card and gave it to him right away. And he said, and then I have to sell my house in Lancaster. And I said, and that's my state. So I said, you're covered on both ends. So as he left for the day, and I thanked all of them for a great job done, he said, Diane, don't forget, I want to move in March. And I'm going to be calling you so we can talk about listing my house right after the first of the year. And I think that's a great story because it came about from just having a nice conversation with somebody, but you always want to bring your profession into that conversation. And, uh, you know, I got stopped at the grocery store yesterday too with, I saw a realtor that I hadn't seen in a long time. And he goes, Oh, come here, give me a hug. Hello, blah, blah, blah. Someone else heard us. And when I got up to the cash register, the gentleman behind me was holding a bag. And so I moved the stuff forward on the, on the treadmill and um, so he could set his stuff down and he goes, Oh, how nice that you cleared the stuff. He said, you're a realtor, aren't you? And I said, yeah, man, I'm wondering how he knew. And he goes, I heard the gentleman say that he goes, I wish I was going to buy something. He said, you're a very nice lady. And he said, I would like to work with somebody like you. So that was the great pickup of the end of my day was that somebody even just from that, knew that you were going to be a helpful person. And all I did was move things out of the way so he could set his bag of groceries down because he was a little bit older. So yeah, just, just talking in front of people. That's all you really got to do. You're going to find someone who goes, we're looking for a house and that's how your career will get off the ground. And I think that, uh, you know, it, it kind of goes with what we've said and where, kind of what you started with Erica of the, the guy that was a sports agent. And so, yeah, he has a sphere of influence. And so, you know, you look at that and go, gosh, I wish we, you know, we can make that kind of money with that sphere of influence. Cause obviously those people make big bucks, right? But that isn't attainable. So what is, what is attainable for you? And that's what we're going to get into with the business planning as far as, you know, looking at last year and going over your numbers and going over your business and not comparing yourself and just do your business. It's not that complicated. I think people complicate real estate or the agents, I should say, uh, complicate uh, being a realtor. And like you said, mom, if you're so many say I get into this industry because I want to help people. 
do you really want to help people? That's your big question mark. And like you, like that realtor, did she really want to help Mr. Tree Man? No, she didn't. <laughs> and that's very sad. She doesn't know how many people he knows. She doesn't right. know. First of all, he said his son lives in Colorado Springs. How many people does his son know? If it was, was any, I, I will brag on this. If it was any of us, we know that. We've been taught that by yeah. Mama Diby and our mentor that you don't know who somebody knows. And boy, you can just kill yourself right there. And that's sad because that one call could make you thousands of dollars. And we have many stories like that in our family. Many. Of doing this, this uh, business of where we took that time because, uh, which leads into what happened to Eric and I this week. Um, I hate to just keep being the one talking, but uh, so, you know, sometimes like you're saying, mom, you, you don't know, um, you know, you're doing your craft. That gave her the opportunity to see houses that day. She didn't look at it like that. Mm -hmm. She didn't look at it like, well, what if you have a buyer behind Tree Man? You're going to know what the properties look like. We went over that in the the last few podcasts. Know your neighborhoods. Well, right there, it's not a waste Mm -hmm. of time because you've just worked on your craft for the day. Why is that a waste of time, right? But that's how people look at it. So like this um, last week, we had uh, my husband's a horse trainer. And so we had some clients in the barn. And I mean, the parents looked at me and, and the son was riding with my husband and they said, gosh, we just want, they have a baby on the way. We really want to raise our kids in this lifestyle that you guys have here. And Eric and I shared how we've been raised that this way our whole lives and we couldn't agree more. And so I said, well, why can't you do that? I said, tell me what's stopping you. What? And they go, well, obviously the market, but um, the dad, Andrew says, but my mom wants to invest and he looked at his wife, Crystal, and he goes, you know, I never thought she only needs $100,000. And I looked at them both and I said, well, wait a minute. I go, and you all have houses? And he goes, yeah. And I said, Eric and I are getting started in the business here in Colorado. We need to practice. I said, give us those addresses. Let us run numbers for you. Let us find property, horse property that, that is affordable for you. And at the same time, not too much work because you know that's what you listen to right they didn't want too much land they wanted enough that they could have horses and animals they love animals and they looked at me and they said we never thought of that I said well if you're going to pull your money together as a family that's what you have to start with well they never even thought of that they were just going to kill their dream and be like nope we can't afford it and the way the market is well this market is going to turn I mean we all know that so but that's what and his face lit up and he goes you would do that and I said yes we would do that. And it said, even if you don't use us, at least you have some numbers down on paper that look that you can present to your mom and you guys sit down together as a family. She already said she wants to invest for you kids, but she's lacking the hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Let's find the hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And so there's some good stories and we're hoping to keep bringing these stories to everyone. And what would you like to add to kind of like what we're doing? Yeah. You know, I think it, um, I, I think it helps when when we have the stories because hopefully it will it will spark creativity and you know uh, talking about business plans and mom and I were listening so I have a favorite coach in Jared James um, I really enjoy following him I've been a part of his coaching programs and masterminds and things like that and um, he he has a a really great saying which is visibility trumps ability. And you can't sit back and think, I'm fabulous and everyone should use me. Well, people aren't going to know how fabulous you are. And I've always felt like, as much as mom was always against the PTA, (laughs) I always believed in volunteering for organizations. And it wasn't, I I didn't go into it going, this is how I'm going to get business. Of course, the organizations that I volunteered for that I was a part of, I was passionate about, and it fulfilled me in in other ways. However, it also helped me get business because people would look at me and go, God, if you work this hard for this, I can only imagine how hard you work for your client. And I've had people tell me that. So I've been able to prove my ability in other ways. And that's been by volunteering for organizations. Um, both in the real estate and outside of the real estate. And it's, it's allowed me to show people my ability. And so, and it's given me the visibility. 
um, our California team with Diane, uh, Sunshine, and Christina, they did a coat drive. It's getting cold. We have a homeless population. They need warmth. They need jackets. They were in desperate need. So Christina and Sunshine organized an entire coat drive. We put it out on social media. They collected all the coats. They went to drop it off. And the lady was so grateful that they did it. And she needs to buy something. And she said, I'm going to use you guys. So there's, there's an emotional component as well to, there's an emo, there's just an emotional component. People need to know who they're, they're hiring. And some people, they want to have that feeling. They want to know who you are as a person. And so, you know, yeah, you, you want to find that fine line, especially on how much you put on social media. But I've never held back with what I've put on social media about me because this is who I am. So either I'm going to fit you or I'm not. And there have been also plenty of clients where I've said, this is not going to be a good working relationship. <laughs> so, well, and, and, so. and kind of going along our theme then of what we want to cover in this podcast then rolls us into the marketing ideas and your sphere. And you're going to have, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on at the schools. Right now with the holidays, they all have little Thanksgiving gatherings and um, they also have uh, Christmas pageants. There's all kinds of things coming up. And you got to remember that you have people from out of town coming into your town. And that's what ends up sparking, right? They're like, oh, I would love to live here. Could I live here? And they might be calling you to just, you know, drive them around and, and look at some properties. But just remember that. They are there visiting people that live there. Mm -hmm. So it's not a waste of your time. Um, have we all thought that? Well, of course, we've kind of felt like, well, gosh, I didn't want to do this. But you know what? Don't think that way because it is an important thing. It's important for you're, you're always on. You're always in business. And that's why you get into this business. So let's roll into the social media with the holidays coming, like you say. So you do postings. I know you have stuff on, on our website for what to post and, and be um, very diligent and be very consistent. Yeah, I'll be putting out a December uh, social media calendar. November seems to have gotten away from me, but I'll be putting out a December. Well, there's not a whole lot in November you can. Yeah, yeah there's really not. To Thanksgiving, it's fun to post maybe some fun things about that and yeah or like a fun recipe you know yeah. anything that you yeah. can share there have been so many things that that here lately I'm like I need to share this with my audience you know it, that's really cool breakfast I've been making every morning um and it, you know so that's the thing is that you know some of it can just be personal stuff it doesn't have to be real estate day in and day out if you go to our website you can see the October calendar I made and you can see pretty much how I pulled it all together and you could make up your own stuff. But I will be putting out a December social media. This is the time that you need to do research. Um, with our marketing, mom and I had always been sometimes thinking outside the box, or at least I've always liked thinking outside the box. So what I would be doing right now to prepare is I'm going to be doing my research on what are the best streets that you can go visit for Christmas lights. Um, what are, you know, maybe some of the Christmas tree lots that are out there? Are there any Christmas tree lots that are donating to charity? Sometimes you have Christmas tree lots ran by charitable organizations. Researching all of that. When is the light up on Main Street? All of these different things. These are all things to be getting out to the public. And if you're doing it on social media, great. If you're doing it as a postcard, even better. Usually during the summertime, we always do, we have a, an event, we have concerts in the park, which is on Saturdays. I do a postcard that has all of the dates of the concerts in the park and who the band is. And then a little QR code. And I do a video on how I personally do concerts in the park. And you want something that people are going to hang that postcard on your fridge. <laughs> so I like to do things like that. In Santa Clarita, we have the senses. On Thursday nights, I do the same thing. I put together a postcard that has all of the dates and tells you what the themes of the Thursday night events are. And I send that out. We send it out to our database. I, there's some of your marketing materials. I feel like they need to go a little bit outside the box. You almost want to be like the Chamber of Commerce <laughs> for your community. And 
get information out there. Be the be the person that gets information out there. Another thing I did which gets you visibility. Which like gets you the it. visibility. Another thing I had done, and it was funny because there was a photographer that posted uh they're doing like the best of the best in santa clarita so she tagged me in it because she said you need to vote this person for best realtor and she included me well her and i worked together in the elementary school pta for one and she was a photographer well what i had done was i had done helpful little elves i did a helpful little elves list and I listed people. So I said, you're going to need holiday pictures. Here's a photographer. And by the way, if you tell her I sent you, you get 10% off. And I wanted to give her the business. She, you know, was kind of new in photography. So I'm like, here, you know, give me your information. Can I put you on this? And I put on my social media. We mailed it out to people. That also sparked where now I get people that reach out to me going, do you know an HVAC person? Do you know this person? Do you know that person? Because I had done that list. I'm like, here's a handyman who can take care of the little fix it things you need before people come in, you know, to stay at your house for the holidays. And here's a carpet person. If you need it restretched here, I mean, it just, the list was like endless. It was painters and carpet people. And uh, our local moving company did temporary storage. So it's like, do you need to get rid of bulky furniture here? They'll store it for you and they'll give you a 10% discount. Here's a place they'll clean your carpet. So Things like that. Be a resource for people. It doesn't have to be real estate all the time. But let people know that you can be a resource because they're you're going to be the first person they think of to call. Sure. And then at some point, that's going to turn to something. And I'd like to defend myself right here when Erica said that I say, quit joining the PTA. (laughs) The true PTA... I'm all for you're around the kids, you're around the parents of the kids, you're going to pick up that's a way to grow your business for sure. However, when I was stating that to her, it's something my mother used to say, I don't belong to the PTA. And I'd go, but mommy, everybody's mom belongs to the PTA. (laughs) Well, Erica raises her hand for a yes for everything, not just PTA. If they need someone, she's your girl. Well, You know, you can only do so many things. And some of those things were not related where other people would be. It just took up a lot of time. And Mama Di said, how about we get back in the office and we don't just be that kind of volunteer. Do good time things. Yes. For the coat drive, all of that, I'm 100% in. I don't want the people listening to this to think that I don't (laughs) want to help anybody. I do help. (laughs) Now you have and a guess very good what? Point I is- was at every PTA function she did because the whole family pitched in. We all got her done, but Erica is good oh, at yeah, her you've job. You've done your, you did your fair share of volunteering with us going to private school and <laughs> yeah. the hours that you had to put in and, and mm-hmm. look at how many clients, even let's look at back, back on those years, how many clients you had when they went. I remember you at the church. You were always doing something at the church and they right. remembered you and they called. And, yes. that and see places so. like yeah, places like that you do. You absolutely do. That's that's the easy kind of marketing that doesn't cost you anything, just is your time. So Erica was very much correct in in 90% of what she did, but sometimes we had to pull her arm down because <laughs> she's just so I could do that for you, type of child. <laughs> Fun and, and um kind of going back to if there's new agents listening and uh on that note of uh, that balance of helping people. And um, if we have a, so our mother drove a town car for many, many years <laughs> until she saw the pizza guy driving the town car and she decided she should trade her town car in. But it fits her godmother style. You know, the Sicilian mother that she is, man, it was the perfect car. We none of us wanted her to get rid of it. But she had a few clients that got a little comfortable in the back seat. And tell those stories of when you decided that it was time to kick them out of the car. (laughs) This gentleman wanted to look at property over in Lake Elizabeth, which is a very windy road from from where we are in Santa Clarita. 
And it takes you about a good 45 minutes and, and you're at risk driving this roadway. So we went out to look at houses. He wanted to see some houses on a Saturday. So we went out there and he kind of liked the town and did like he maybe would want to live there. And okay, that's cool. And we come back to the office and he goes, yeah, he goes, you know, I think I really am interested in that area. He goes, next Saturday, I'm available. Also, do you think we can look one more time? And I said, oh, absolutely, sure. So the next Saturday we go out. And I was then like the lady in Colorado Springs, I guess, because then by the third Saturday that we went out, we got back to the office and he goes, what time next Saturday? And I thought, this guy just wants to take a drive every Saturday because <laughs> it's it's country and rural and that kind of thing. So um, he bought a house locally in Santa Clarita, but it was like, we're done with the driving on Saturday type of thing. So I was gentle and kind about it for sure. <laughs> Pretty funny story. Yeah. And for the new agents, can I tell one funny story? Because when you're brand new, you kind of feel like, oh, my goodness, am I going to know what to do, how to do, when to do? And this was this is something that I've had a couple things like this in the career because it was so many years. But this one was really something. I went to show property up in Castaic. And so I had the address all written down and everything. And I had looked up my directions, didn't have GPS back then. And so I drive up and go up the roadway and I turned left onto the first street because that's what I had written down. And there was the house address. So we got out, we knocked on the door and the gentleman opened it and he goes, hi. And I said, hello, how are you? I'm here to show your home. He goes, great, come on in. So I show the whole house. It's really nice and, and lovely. <laughs> my clients like it a lot. So... After we're done, he's standing outside, but must go through his house. And I said, okay, thank you so much. And I appreciate you letting us go through and I'll be in touch with your agent. And he said, I don't have an agent. I said, oh, so I immediately look at the MLS and uh, you do have it here. You have an agent. And he goes, that's not my house. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said, oh, wait, excuse me. Back then, the MLS was in a book. You didn't have photos. So otherwise, I would have obviously, wait, this isn't that house. But there was no photos. It was just a little thing. So anyway, he said, my house isn't for sale. And I said, oh, well, is this the right address? Because this is your address. And he goes, yeah, but it's the next street up. <laughs> I just was so embarrassed and the clients were laughing. And I said, that's what I get for talking too much when I'm showing property. So if you do something a little bit silly, it's okay. We went to the next street. That house wasn't as nice. We really wanted to go back and make him sell his. But they bought something, but later down the road, nothing up there, you know. So anyway, if you make a mistake, is, I've got a few stories like that. So it'll yeah. just add to you. So we had a little bit of a blooper moment <laughs> but circling back so it's kind of, it's it's funny what's funny is that the man let you tour the entire house <laughs> I know and he was so nice and he was just smiling from ear to ear you know it was kind of like he I think he knew what he wanted to do you know kind of a thing so anyway yeah, that was funny yeah. um well, and then finishing up, so finishing up talking, because we really dove into marketing with, with this episode, and the next episode, we'll get into uh, more of the business planning. But another thing is that you have to c c think about then and now, right? So when I talked about thinking outside the box and another marketing uh, item that we did and it is going to be on the website this one we are going to be charging for i will be charging because there was a lot of time and effort that was put into it but i was noticing when agents were trying to get visibility and they were doing advertising on social media they were just sending people to their website well to me a website replaces what was billboard right so when you're driving through town and people's faces are plastered on billboards, you know nothing about them. You really can't get a grasp for who they are, how they're going to take care of you as a client, all of that. So I don't know, in my brainiac ways, I thought, well, I'm going to put together this digital magazine. And I started out 
very messy, but I reached out to a couple friends and I said, Hey, I want to put together this digital magazine. I'm going to do all the advertising. I'll pay for everything. All I need from you is I need you to write an article for me. And that's what started it. So they contributed. And when, when you buy the program, I'm going to explain to you how I did everything from A to Z. I'm even going to show you how you personalize it on Canva. And I'm giving you the template as well. And so I put together this digital magazine and I had people that submitted the articles. I wrote something personal about myself. I talked about all the last times that no one talks about when you have a senior in high school, right? So everyone always talks about becoming an empty nester, but no one prepared me for all the last times. And uh, Kaylee was very involved in volleyball and, and very involved in school. So there were a lot of last times. So there was a lot of crying her senior year. <laughs> and so I wrote a personal article about that. And then at the backside, I had um, stats, real estate stats. And, and I gave the real estate market update for the year. And I thought, I'm just going to see what happens and threw it up. Well, in two days, I had over 3,000 views of that magazine. Oh. And I just advertised it to our local community. What then really took me aback by a little bit was that a few days later, we were at a community event and Brandon and I were just standing around chatting with people. And the amount of people, community people, that came up to me and said, I saw your magazine. And how does someone get to be in it? How does someone contribute an article? How did you figure out who would do it? And I said, actually, I'll take anyone that wants to write an article. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the community people that they knew me, but they were intrigued by this magazine and what I had done. And I told them, I'm just going to do it quarterly because it would be a lot to do every single month. So I was just going to do it quarterly. I'm putting one together currently for our team that's going to be a holiday guide and highlight some local businesses and things that they have that would be some fun, fun things to, to buy for people for Christmas. And um, that really took off and, and I was surprised. So it's another way to get the visibility that you want and, again, have a personal touch behind it and kind of be that chamber of commerce uh, for the community. And I didn't have to do a video. I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to be at the forefront of it. But putting it together, it, it was full of a lot of information. And I think that it was one of the best things that, that we had done because it really raised an eyebrow for a lot of people. There were a lot of people that saw it and then wanted to know how they could be a part of it. And I thought that was equally. So you're going to have cool. a link on the website and yes. it's going to be available immediately. It will be. Yes. It'll be available immediately and you can download it. And it's really, if anyone took a look at the chip bags, it's the same thing. I'm going to talk you through every bit of detail of how I, put it together, how I got it out there, um, a sample letter of the emails that I wrote people, conversations that I had. And then, of course, I put together the entire magazine template for you. So you really just, it's kind of plug and play. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. So, all right. So, all right. Sign us off. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And again, don't forget to visit connectwitherica.com. You can send us an email, let us know if there's anything you want us to touch upon and hoping to help you out as best we can. And we're rolling into the holidays, so we have so much to be grateful for and uh, hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. And, and we're going to have our next episode will be our business planning. Yes. We everyone. are very grateful for everything and grateful for everyone who is listening into these and sharing back their comments. I think that that made my day. So happy Thanksgiving and bless you all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Real Estate Unlocked. 
We hope you've gained valuable insights to unlock your potential in this dynamic industry. Remember, your support means the world to us. If you found value in today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform or YouTube. As we wrap up this episode, always remember that every door in real estate is an opportunity waiting to be unlocked. Keep pushing forward and your success will follow. Don't forget to ask questions, find resources, and explore connectwitherica.com. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes, stories, and expert advice on Real Estate Unlocked.